So the slim image. In this case, we're not going to be changing the aspect ratio of the image, but we're going to prevent the aspect ratio of the image from changing, if that makes sense. So in this case, the client has said they want her to be slimmed up a little bit. And oftentimes you'll find that photographers or retouchers just slim the image up, just grab the whole image, just kind of eh, squish it inwards. Just a few percent, kind of gives a little bit of a, a longer, slimmer sort of appearance. Now, if we did that to this image, if I said, okay, let's select this layer and let's just move it inwards, we'd end up with a gap down either side, which I would then somehow have to deal with. Uh, let's take a look at slimming her up while leaving this image the same width. And I could slim the whole thing and then stretch the sides back out, but every time you make a transformation, whether it's a scale, a shift, it's gonna add a little bit of softness to the image. So what if we could do one shift on each of the parts of this image, her, the outsides, just one little shift. Um, but I guess the question comes down to which of these layers would we do it to? I mean, let's take a look at the layers in this thing. This is the original image as it came out of the camera here, and this is what was sent to the client. There's not a whole lot of difference. I mean, if you look at the original image, um, there's a bunch of gum, there's some cigarette butts, there's, I don't even know what that is. And the client wanted, well, for some reason they wanted some of the gum to remain. So if you look at the um, after version, some of the gum is there. Most of the other stuff has been cleaned up, but look at the skirt. Here's the before and here's the after. Just the way that fabric was falling gave it a bit kind of like a Jodfer shorts kind of look. So just a little bit of a liquify to pull the bottom out and push the top in. As far as the skin goes, there wasn't really a whole lot needed. There's before and there's after. So we've got a bunch of layers in here. We've got the liquify that was used for the skirt there. Oh, fixes heel. One of the things you'll find with fashion is the clothing stylist will pull clothing before they even know who the model is. And oftentimes the shoes either don't fit all that well, or in this case it's a heel and the, you know, the, the foot is sliding forward. You're getting a bit of a bulge up here. That was fairly easily fixed with the liquify. But you'll often find that the heel kind of slides right out of the heel of the shoe. And in this case, all I did was I took this little back part here, popped it onto a new layer, slid it down, and blended it back in. So there's the liquify that kind of fixes that bulge at the top of the ankle there. And this is the fixes heel. And basically it's just a little section of the heel and some of the roadway popped onto a new layer, dragged down into position, and then hidden with a layer mask. So there's before and there's after. It maybe makes it a little bit of a, a shorter look on the back, but at least you don't have this big gaping hole behind her heel there. And then a little bit of retouching to pick stuff out of the image, and there's the whole shebang. So which of these layers would we be doing the work on? Well, the answer is a merged copy of all of them. Sometimes when you're retouching, you gotta do something that is going to affect the entire image and it's gonna to have to affect all of these layers down below. In this case, there's not a whole lot we can do. We gotta make a merged copy of everything. Now there's a few ways we could do that. We could go select all, which would select all the pixels in the image, or the keyboard shortcut would be command A. So we could do a select all or command A, and then we could <coughs> copy, but would it be a copy? No, because we have this retouching layer selected. If I copied, all it would copy is the pixels on this retouching layer. That's not what we're looking for, but copy merged. If you have multiple layers, using the copy merged command, we'll make a merged copy of all these layers and put that into the clipboard. So I'll choose copy merged, and then I can choose edit paste. So command A, shift command C, command V, We'll select all, copy merged, and paste that into a new layer. If you want to bypass all of that, anybody know the keyboard shortcut for making a merged copy of all the layers below? It's a hand cramp. Uh, command, Option, Shift, and E. We'll make a merged copy of all those layers down below. And this duplicated layer, this is basically as if I had flattened the document, so that what you would get if you flattened it, and then that layer stuck above all the other layers down below. And this is what we're gonna do our little stretching and squishing on. You guys ready? Let's grab that marquee tool, and all we want to slim, to squish inwards, is her. So grab the marquee, make sure there's no feather radius on it. And when we were looking at the selection tools, we discovered that we could move a selection. Let's say I started making a selection here and it was in the wrong spot. While I'm in selection making mode, if I hold the space bar, I can move that selection somewhere else. When I let go of the space bar, I'm back into selection making mode. So if I wanted to get just her selected, I can, well, first off, we want to get the entire height of the document. So I'm starting again above 
the canvas there, and I'll do a click and a drag downwards. But maybe I'm like, oh no, I'm too far to the left here. Not a problem. If I hold down the space bar, I can move this selection to the right until I'm just getting that little jacket there selected. Let go of the space bar, and I can continue making that selection. And I go right off the bottom of the document. Again, I'm not trying to figure out exactly where that pixel bottom row is. I just drag it right off the bottom, and I know that I have every single pixel in there. And same basic process, a command T, and we'll just nudge those sides in ever so slightly, holding shift if you need to, to break the constraint of the aspect ratio. So I'll just do a command T, and don't be afraid to zoom in. You can still use the trackpad to zoom in while you're in this scale mode, or command plus. And I'm going to grab this side, and clearly I need to hold the shift key, and just a tiny little nudge, just a little bit of a inwards there. Same deal on this side, just a little nudge inwards. We don't want her to look like she's like distorted, like with a crushed head or anything. So just a tiny little nudge inwards. And then a command D to get rid of the marching ants. Now, do you think that's all we need to do? Like if we zoom in here, could there possibly be any potential problems with what we've just done? Oh yeah, look at that. Hmm. Here's a neat trick, guys. If you want to turn off all of the layers except for the one that you're looking at, like this top layer here, this is my stretched layer, if I hold down the Option key and I click on the eyeball, all the other layers turn off. And I can see that gap that I opened up. So if I kind of Option click on that eyeball, I can see where that problem is. I could maybe take a clone stamp and clone this stuff out. But look at what's happening to some of these lines here. Like this border line comes across but then it kind of jumps downwards a little bit. Because the way I've pulled it in, it doesn't really line up with itself anymore. What if I took this left panel and I stretched it outwards until it met up with the side where it was before? Let's turn off all those other eyeballs. Let's hold down the Option key and click on the eyeball beside that top layer there. And you'll see that gap where we stretched that thing open. I'm going to take my marquee tool again, but this time, I'm going to get the left side, this panel across here. And I want to get that right side of the marquee right in the middle of that transparent gap. Well, no, it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, as long as it's somewhere in there. Oh, geez, that was pretty close to the right side. Maybe I'll take another shot at that. If you're close but not quite there, you can always modify a selection after it's made. Like, if I had just gone a little too far, if you go under Select and Transform Selection, you can actually play around with the size of that marquee, so you make it a bit wider, a bit narrower, whatever you need to get it roughly into the middle there. And then it's just a matter of, with this layer one selected, doing a Command T. I could go under Edit, Transform, Scale, or I could do a Free Transform, the keyboard <laughs> shortcut, Gesundheit, Command T. And if I zoom in there, watch this. Just pull this side over, keep that shift key held down to deconstrain the aspect ratio, and just close up that little gap there. And then Command D to get rid of the marching ants. Now you might notice a very slight hint of transparency down the middle. Not that much of a problem. Once you turn on the layers down below, you'll see them through that little gap there. So don't worry too much if there's a little bit of transparency there. And then the same deal on the right side. And if you want to see a before and after, just turn the eyeball off and on on the top layer. Turn on all the other layers, and there we go. There's before, and there's after. So you can see she gets just a little bit narrower. Now technically, if somebody came in with a ruler and put it right across one of these lines of bricks, they might notice that it kind of goes across down and across, like the line might have a little bit of a zigzag to it. But if anybody ever comes along and puts a ruler on your photograph to check for that, you're legally entitled to smack them. Now they also wanted the legs to be stretched out just a little bit. So following the same concept, we can grab that marquee tool, grab the bottom of the legs, command T, and just a slight shift key nudge downwards. And there's a before and there's an after.